all having a wonderful day today. Today we're going to be taking a look at another optic that I managed to break twice. This is the Athlon Helos BTR Gen 2. This is a 1 to 10 MPVO 34mm main tube, 28mm objective, and as the title of the video implies, I did in fact break it again. Now, full disclosure on the Athlon 1 to 10, I have no affiliation with Athlon whatsoever. The original 1 to 10 was sent out to me by Optics Planet, so I didn't pay for the original one, but again, I don't have any affiliation with Athlon, and the only contact I've had with them is their warranty department. For those of you guys who have been around for a while will know that I did review the Athlon 1 to 10 quite some time ago, and in that video, I ended up breaking the optic. I like just about everything else about it, other than its durability, which we'll get into again a little bit later on. But I said if I ever got it back from warranty service, that I would make a video on it, and here we are several months later. Now, getting into some of the basics of what this is, again, this is a 1 to 10 second focal plane LPVO. It has a BDC reticle with some auto ranging features in it. Pretty darn good. It is a Chinese manufactured optic. Price ranges anywhere from 350 to 450, which for a 1 to 10 LPVO is pretty good. This is using a 34 millimeter main tube, 28 millimeter objective lens, capped windage and elevation, illuminated reticle with offsettings in between each settings. I believe it goes from one to six simple 180 degree throw on the magnification ring it doesn't really come with a throw lever it does have a little bit of a knob on there with some decent knurling i did get a aftermarket throw lever to work on there with a little bit of electrical tape but again it doesn't come with one from the factory now for that price one to ten magnification 34 millimeter main tube it comes in at just a little bit over 10 inches long and at a weight of only 18.3 ounces, which is fantastically lightweight for a 1 to 10 34 millimeter main tube. So it is very, very size and weight efficient for its magnification and tube size. On top of that, the glass quality is pretty decent for a Chinese optic. Now at 1x, I believe you have a field of view of 105 feet, something like that, which is decent. It's certainly in the good category, and that is of course going to tighten up at 10x. Eye relief again, also very good at 1x. You get about three and a half, four inches of ideal, and then you can of course move it up, down, left, and right. You get a very good eye box at again 1x. 10x things get very very tight even with a 34 millimeter main tube however it is still in the usable category again about three and a half to four inches of eye relief and it looks pretty decent now when i say pretty decent keep in mind that we're talking about chinese glass it is not going to look like a really high quality scope from any manufacturer out there using japanese german so on and so forth other better glass however again for the price category for the magnification range for chinese glass it looks fine now getting into the second focal plane reticle that we have on the athlon 1 to 10 in the center we have a floating dot that is equivalent to one moa at 10x magnification on top of that we have a half circle-ish, kind of like a half donut of death to kind of draw your eye to the center. All of that illuminates, and for a standard LED emitter, it is pretty bright, it does work well. It is daylight tinted, not again like a red dot or anything, fiber wire, anything like that, but again, the illumination is decent, especially for the magnification and price range that we're in. Now, below the reticle, we have our BDC for, I believe, 14.5 or 16 inch 5.56, so that is going to depend on your barrel, specific ammunition, so on and so forth. You can make it work for other calibers, but you're going to have to true that out yourself and do a little bit of math. Now, you have a BDC all the way out to 700 yards and corresponding 5 and 10 mile an hour wind holds as well. As far as BDCs go, that does everything that I want it to do. It's usable up close. You can take it out to distance. This one specifically, I have taken out to 660-ish yards on a 147.556, and the BDC is certainly usable. Now, on top of that, you also have some auto-ranging features in the bottom portion of the glass for a little bit of a value add. Doesn't really get in the way of anything, and again, in certain situations, that can help you. And again, it's just a nice feature to have. Not that most of us will ever need it. So as far as actually using the scope goes, it's pretty decent. You have a good eye box, eye relief, field of view is decent. The 1X performance is also kind of middle of the pack, but certainly not bad. There's not a lot of fisheye 
or distortion around the edges. Not the most true to life 1X image out there, but for a one to 10, it's actually pretty decent as far as that goes. On top of that, the illumination plus the reticle also works pretty well up close if you did want to use it in a little bit more of a fast acquisition type of environment. And of course you have 10X magnification. Now keep in mind, once you're beyond 400 yards, you really need to be on 10x magnification to actually use the reticle. You can make it work inside of 300 yards because there's basically no hold. 400 yards is just a little bit of drop, and then beyond that, you're really going to need to be on 10x magnification to take advantage of the reticle because it is, again, a second focal plane. At 10x, there is a little bit of glass degradation. It is definitely a lot tighter as far as the eye box and eye relief goes. So it is more difficult to use as you get up in magnification, which is gonna be one of the bigger downsides of it. One to tens can kind of do everything, but they start to fall off pretty hard at the top end, especially compared to like two to 12s, two and a half to 15s, other scopes like that, which are going to have a much more forgiving eye box and eye relief and sometimes field of view as well at those comparable high end magnifications. But again, overall, I still really like the scope. I think it is a tremendous value for a one to 10. Again, if you can find them under $400, I think that is a very usable option that can do just about anything. Certainly not ideal in a lot of circumstances, but for the size, weight and cost, I think it is giving you a ton of performance. Now the area that holds it back and the reason for this follow-up video is that it has a tendency to die during a shoulder height drop. So the first optic that I tested I believe died during the first shoulder height drop onto dirt and rocks. I went ahead and went through the warranty process which was no questions asked. They just completely refunded the scope and again they don't know who I am. I didn't go through them to get the scope in the first place. They just completely sent me out a new scope and upon retesting it, doing some more shooting with it, going through another drop test on it, it died in basically the exact same way. So what happens is at 50 yards, we had about five inches point of impact shift, which is about 10 MOA, which is a pretty substantial point of impact shift. And on top of that, something internally shifted to the point where the higher magnifications became very blurry. So you could get out to about seven or eight and it would look all right. But as soon as you crank it all the way up to 10, the internal parallax had shifted to be like way closer than it should. So if you're shooting at any sort of distance, it just looks very, very blurry and very ugly. Something internally has broken on the optic and it's not really usable. At this point, it's kind of a one to six, a one to seven, and that's clear enough and easy to use. But then of course it does not match with the reticle. So at this point, it is kind of an 18 ounce paperweight, although again, you could use it if you really wanted to, but again, certainly not ideal. And combining that with the point of impact shift that we got twice on the optic means that while I can recommend this from a value perspective, if you just want like a one to 10 target scope for some reason, if you were looking at something for a little bit more serious of a roll, something that would hold up to a little bit of abuse. Again, this did meet an AR500 steel plate, but it didn't need it. It was already broken after the shoulder height drop onto dirt and rocks. These are, at least in my testing, going to be a little bit more fragile even for LPVOs, which tend to be a little bit more fragile in general. This is going to be on the weak side of the weak side of optics. And again, it's kind of unfortunate given its price tag, given its size to weight, performance to weight ratio, I should say. I think that if it was a little bit more durable, it could be a really, really good buy and an easy recommend, again, at that $400 and under price tag. But as it stands, it is a little bit of a fragile scope. You could certainly use it in certain applications, target, you just want a really cheap three gun scope or something like that. You can definitely make it work in some of those roles, but just keep in mind that it is going to be a little bit more fragile. But that's pretty much it for the video, guys. If you made it this far, go ahead and like, share, and subscribe as that is all free and does help us out quite a bit. Also, go ahead and comment your favorite MPVO in the comments down below. On top of that, there's also my subscribe star, which is basically just a pro to a Patreon, and you should check out my website, Focus Shooting LLC. But with all that out of the way, guys, I do want to say thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. I will see you in the next one. Peace out.